Hi, I'm Travis Price and welcome to Stories of Kindness, the show where we give kids across Canada a positive outlet to be creative and kind. Let's get started. Today's theme of Stories of Kindness is Random Acts of Kindness. I can think of so many random acts of kindness that we can do on a daily basis. Giving somebody a positive post-it note. Sending somebody a funny meme that maybe will make their day. Check out all these video submissions showing all kinds of random acts of kindness from around the country. Spread kindness! Happy Pink Shirt Day! Happy Pink Shirt Day! Bullying stops here! Bullying stops here! I know how hard it has been to stay connected during these tough times, but we should always treat everyone equally and be kind. Both bullying and kindness have big effects. It is up to us to choose the right path. We should stand up to mean bullies. To be somebody who can make everyone feel special. Um, kindness is love. Kindness is patient. Kindness is helping little people. Kindness is giving people kind. Kindness is playing games. I'm spending time with my mama. Kindness is listening to other people. It's hugging my brother. Kindness is respecting other people. Kindness is cleaning up. Kindness is about using your manners. Kindness is helping Mr. Albert do his job. Kindness is helping people. And kindness is um, being nice to friends. Is respecting people. Kindness is being kinder than necessary. Kindness, um, kindness is laying when somebody says, can I play with you? And you say yes. Kindness is letting people go first. We know that we have to be kind and take care of each other, especially right now. We look forward to the days when we can be together again, all in person. Until then, take care and remember to be kind. It is so inspiring to see these people throughout Canada truly making a difference. There's clearly so many random kindness acts we can do. It's unlimited. Now let's get on over to my co-host for today's show, Scotia Browner from Vancouver. Thank you, Travis. I'm very excited to be your co-host today. No, thank you, Scotia. Do you want to tell everyone a bit about yourself? Well, I am 15 years old. I live in Vancouver, and I love to do musical theater. So today our episode is about random acts of kindness. So this one time a couple years ago, I was at an audition, and I was with my best friend, and we were waiting to get our sides. And there was a girl at the side like in the side she was kind of in the waiting room just like sadly waiting and we felt we felt like she didn't she didn't know anybody at the audition or anything so we invited her to come sit with us and she was actually really cool and she was very funny and nice and we all ended up getting in the show together so i was very glad we did that that's awesome hey i know you're a huge football fan so today we have cfl player manny arsenal for you to talk with he should be calling in Right about now. Hi, Manny. Welcome to Stories of Kindness. Thank you so much for being here. No, thanks for having me on here. So, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your uh, background in football? Yeah, I'm uh, Manny Arsenault. Um, real name is Emmanuel, but everybody call me Manny. Um, I'm a former NFL, CFL um, football player. So, how did you get into football? Man, football kind of, it was like my outlet. Like you do dance and people play instruments and do things. Sports was sort of my outlet, my way to um, socialize, be able to have friends and be part of activities and just a part of a group. And um, coming from a single parent background, by me being in sports, those coaches play more of a father figure slash uncle role slash mentor. And that's kind of 
what had me just really enjoy playing sports and being around it. I was able to make new friends and I was able to have that guidance and that father figure or male influence in my life through sports. Mm -hmm. Because I know there's a lot of competition in football. So um, what inspires you to take on such a competitive career? Just being able to compete. Um, that's what I love most. That's what I kind of miss most. I was talking to some of my teammates and we were just thinking about ball and with the whole COVID stuff. And they was just asking me about missing the game. And I'm like, man, what I miss most is just the fun in the locker room, talking to the fellas, but actually being out there competing because, you know, the lifting weights, the training and getting ready is a grind. Nobody really missed that part. But what you miss is being out there with the fans or just being able to being able to make a kid smile and just get the feedback from the fans in general. And I think that's what I miss most. But just being able to compete and and, and, and go against folks is that's like <laughs> I just get excited thinking about it now, just going out there, being able to compete. So what kind of amazing opportunities have you experienced through your career? Man, I had plenty of opportunities. Um, just being out in the Vancouver area, being an ambassador for Shaw, uh, allowed me opportunities to, to, to meet great people, be a part of things like the community and the cities. When I was in Regina or when I was in British Columbia, football gave me a platform to reach people that I probably wouldn't be able to reach as just a regular individual that was working a regular job. So being a part of football and making a name for myself, put me in rooms with people that was in position of power. And I think that was the biggest thing, being able to network, being that football is kind of the door just about closed. Now I'm being able to reach back and email people, text people, and just see how important that it's not what you know, but who you know nowadays. Mm -hmm. Especially with the time of COVID, everyone Everyone is on their computers. Everyone is in their emails. So it's much easier to reach people now. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. But um, yeah, with the athletes that I'm just mentoring and coaching and volunteering, but it uh, start off with something as simple as when you wake up in the morning, making your bed, um, really having that structure. And as a professional athlete, that's pretty much how your lifestyle is. It's structured. Wake up, breakfast, film, practice, lunch. Might work out again, study some more film, dinner, go to sleep, <laughs> wake up and do it all over again. But um, it's just telling the student athletes, you're a student first, athlete second. Um, never forget about those academics. That's what it's all about. Taking advantage um, and, and being on top of everything that's off the field. The athleticism and talent, you have that. But um, you always will need something to fall back on because you can't play whatever sport you're playing forever and that's something that I stress to them to have fun now still be a kid still enjoy yourself but just know it's consequences for the decisions and the choices that you make but always try to surround yourself with good people folks that's going to lift you up and believe in what it is you're trying to accomplish but just having that structure and just having that guidance and more importantly just having the support whether it's from family and friends great deal and also not um shying away from being happy for others when you see them achieving their success you know um but just using the time now and being happy for others um surrounding yourself with people that challenge you that make you better not being able to um ask for help not being afraid to ask those questions and that's what life is pretty much about just a continuous cycle of learning. You're always learning something um, and you can learn something from anyone, but for the student athletes, it's about that consistency and having that structure and, and just being disciplined. So what is a unique story of kindness that you could share with us or random acts of kindness that you can do? Man, I think now that you got me um, really on the spot, I would take it back to probably about four or five years ago, being in BC, I think the parent name was Melanie Anderson, had a little boy and it was something about sports. And we was going back and forth and I was like, hey, you know what? I could kind of do some kind of kids camp or put something together, work with your son. So I remember meeting up with the lady and the kid was quiet, didn't say much. 
And, you know, I was like, man, I wonder, like, what's going on? I need to fix my energy. I need to, you know, like, it just kind of was one of those moments. Wasn't awkward, wasn't weird. It was just, you know, maybe I need to bring a little bit more energy. And what got me is every year I was a volunteer for the um, Canuck Autism Network that the Canucks put on at BC Place. Um, and you'd be around all the kids and the families, and that's usually their time to unwind. But I had the little boy, and uh, he was um, had he was autistic. But his mom, I was showing him ladder drills, and I remember her crying, and I didn't understand why, because no one told me anything. But being able to relate to the kid, be transparent, to teach him those drills, and to see the smile on his face, because I guess he never been part of something like that, made his mom day. And I remember when she mentioned the school he went to, I was like, how about I host a camp for him and his classmates? And everybody was like, Manny, how are you going to do that? You know, global news and them people came out. But I actually had a successful camp for her son and the other classmates that was around and being able to see some of those kids during a Canuck week when they host that event at BC Place and for them to remember me and they'll come grab, hold on to my pocket, hold my hand. And I'm telling the parent, like, nah, the kid's okay. Like, nah, he's not bothering me. You know, it's all about the kids making sure they have fun and being a part of something. And I think that day when I was able to overcome that barrier and help those kids be a part of something organized. I had teammates that had children that was autistic or dealing with some type of disability reach out to me and was like, Manny, like, what were some of your cues? What, how did you go about it? Um, and was asking plenty of questions because they were parents, you know? And I just was telling them, I was like, to be honest with you, I had the patience and it was all about the kid, making sure I can put a smile on their face make sure they enjoy themselves. And ever since that day, it kind of stuck with me on how important it is to always um, feel that you're accepted and a part of something. So like for me, I don't care where I'm at, who I'm around, I'm always going to treat everyone with the utmost respect and actually want to know how that person doing. But several years ago, I think that's probably was the biggest act of kindness because it opened my mind up to so much to the mindset of no child left behind like motto really or even an individual but just had me understanding that everyone in life is dealing with something so that's why the least you can do is smile and like you say be kind to each person you cross or may encounter because you never know what anyone is dealing with that must have been thank you so much manny for sharing your stories of kindness and all of your great advice <laughs> nah, thank you guys for having me. I enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see the finished product. Thank you so much for being on the show, Manny. Back to you, Travis. Thank you, Scotia and Manny, for taking the time to be on our show today. Making a difference is important no matter what it is. Now, we have a special video submission from our pal, WhatsApp the Walrus. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm here at the Parliament Building in Victoria, BC, and I'm going to speak about the subject of kindness today. My name is Witsa, the mascot and ambassador of the Wits programs. I'm here to tell you to use your wits. If you find yourself in a sticky situation with a bully, use your wits. W. Walk away. I. Ignore. T. Talk about it. S. Seek help. Together, we can erase bullying. I think this time, you should do it like Jojo Siwa. Go, what's up? Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm, oh, oh, you don't want it anymore? Okay, fine. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us for Stories of Kindness. Please remember, believe in yourself, believe in each other, and let's continue to spread stories of kindness. See you next time.